All right, okay. If you live in America, chances are you, we have actually quite, quite a lot of non-American uh, people here, which makes me very happy. But if you live in America, you are probably a work cuck. And when I say a work cuck, you might go, well, what does it mean? Is being a work cuck when you work, when you work a wage job? Is being a work cuck when you think that work is important? No, being a work cuck is when you have bought in to, and, and by the way, I try to say work cuck with the, the least amount of, ju of judgment as I can, but it is uncool to be a work cuck, okay? Let's get that out of the way. It's uncool to be a work cuck, and I know because I have been a work cuck, and in some ways, I still am a work cuck. So try not to judge yourself too hard, but let's remember that it is uncool to be a work cuck. So this is what it means to be a work cuck. A work cuck is not just somebody who works. It's not just somebody who thinks that work is important. A work cuck is somebody who has been deluded by constant societal pressure into believing that they always gotta do their best no matter, no matter the odds. That is a work cuck, okay? And almost every American is a work cuck. Americans, will unironically go into their job where their boss could literally burp in their face and spit in their eye and they would still finish their shift. They would still give a two weeks notice. They could be fired from five jobs in a row and they will still dutifully deliver their not legally required two week notice. Americans are such work cucks that they will literally choose not to use their vacation time because they think that it makes them a cooler and better worker to not use their god-given vacation time but that shit is cucked and it is uncool and it is disappointing and it isn't sexy at all it isn't at all Every American is a workaholic. I have talked about how I am a workaholic, and I mean I'm a workaholic even by American standards. You all know this because you see me on stream all the time. I'm on this stream so frequently. I work so much for this goddamn stream, and you all do get to benefit from it. And there's a reason why I'm willing to be a little bit of a work cuck, and that's because I think that there is a very direct reward for me being a work cuck. When I work, I show up and you all get entertained and I make some money. It's not sexy. Good thing I'm totally not trying to make all horny illegal. If you're trying to make horny illegal, we are enemies. This is a better work to be cucked to than, than, than most. In some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. But we'll get into that. I'll, I'll get into that. I'll address that directly, Vermin, throughout this conversation. Um, there are... There's a lot of ways in which it really isn't better, but there are other ways in which it is. One way in which it's better is that I get to see the direct, um, the direct impact of my work. Um, when, when I do something, I get to hear from you all directly. You tell me that it's good or that it's bad or whatever for the most part. And that is really, really valuable. Um, as it turns out, um, there's actually been research into this. I've talked about this on a previous stream. There's been research done into this that one of the things that people list um, as most important in job satisfaction is feeling like they have an impact and knowing what their impact is. And in that way, YouTube is very cool. Rook, Rook, Rook Hacks says, my grandfather was a good man. He once told me, boy, I don't care if you're a stockbroker on Wall Street or flipping fries at McDonald's. Do that job to the best of your ability because that's your job and nobody else's. That, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your grandpa was a work cuck. And it sounds like his heart was in the right place. And it is true, indeed, that it comes from a good place. Just like all cucks, they might be good people, but they are nonetheless cucked. That is very cucked. And let me tell you why it's very cucked, okay? Let me explain something that we like to call a contradiction. Let's borrow a little bit of Marxian analysis here for just a second, right? 
there is a class contradiction between the wage worker and the owner of the of the place that you work at they want to produce their goods for the cheapest rate possible for the greatest profit possible and what that inevitably means is that even if you have the nicest boss in the world unless you have a stake in the business their interest is oppositional to yours because your goal is to get paid the most for the work that you do you understand nobody no worker and you're a super cuck if you don't think that's your job you're a super cuck if you don't think that that's that's not what you're supposed to do as a worker as a worker you should be trying to get as much money as possible for the job that you're doing Anthony, at Axier, at Axier, just wait and I'll answer your question, okay? Oh, we'll, we'll go over the tweet in a minute, Babylon the Great. Don't you worry about that. We'll bring that up, okay? Let me explain another part of this. So that oppositional relationship in your workplace, the job, the owner of your workplace wants you to make the least possible because every worker is an expense, Think about that. I want you all to just do some systemic analysis for once in your goddamn life. Okay? People always like to think about things super individually. Oh, but my manager is really nice to me. Well, your manager is a cuck too. Because guess what? The owner of that business wants to pay the managers the least that they can as well. Now, there's sometimes further, con uh, further conflict because some managers are paid out of like whatever money the branch makes and then they might have even further perverse incentives but the fact of the matter is that there is an oppositional relationship between the boss and the worker when it comes to income and because of that you have to be a little bit cutthroat and people don't like being cutthroat and Americans especially don't like, well, some Americans like being cutthroat, but most Americans don't because most Americans are decent people. And most Americans have been taught that if you ask for a fair wage, you are being rude or entitled to your boss. But that's simply not true because your boss will gladly, gladly cut expenses in any way possible if it improves their profit margin. Do you understand? Do you understand what's being said here thank you very much Louis Vuitton appreciate that so yeah and it doesn't matter you have to think about it like this again it's not the individuals your manager might be really nice it doesn't matter because your job your goal as a worker is to get paid as much as you can and that should be your goal that's the way it's supposed to be you have to do that otherwise you're willingly sacrificing yourself on the altar of a corporation but i want to i want to give you some examples of things that are super work cucked okay and i'm going to be very very open and honest with you and i'm going to confess to my own wage cuckery you understand because i let me tell you something. Who knows my real name? Does anybody know my first name, IRL? I know some of you do. If you know my IRL name in chat, go ahead and type it. My first name. Not my whole name. My first name. My first name. It's Demon. Yes, it's Demon. I've thought about that. Emily. Yes, you got it. Yes, you got it. Correct. Correct. Yep, and you spelled it correctly. Emily with an IE. Emily with an IE. Does anybody know what the name Emily means? The name Emily means hard worker. Hard worker. Yeah. Weird. Do you think I chose that by accident? I chose my name because of the of the meanings. It means hard worker. And I chose that because I identify and identified very strongly with my work ethic to the point that I even chose that as my name. I wanted to remind myself that working hard was important. 
And despite choosing that as my name, I have realized that my conception of work was totally wrong. Let me tell you some of the stuff that I used to do for my job. First of all, I worked three jobs at one time once. Three, sep three jobs. I worked a job in sales. I worked a job in IT. And I worked as a baggage handler for a major airline. VM Draco, it's because uh, of my, an my ancestry, which I have basically no connection to except for my name. But I wanted something. I used to work three jobs. I would regularly sleep in my car to catch sleep between shifts. I uh, would often stay late. Uh, often stay late. Um, and would usually not even get um, overtime for that. Anyway, where was I? At my job, I would regularly stay sometimes until 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning because my boss told me I had to. Because the way that it works is that if you, if you work in, in the sales environment I did, you would sometimes get customers late at night based on, this, on the transit schedule because I worked in a airport sales. Uh, oh, I was just crunching on a piece of ice because it was it's super hot in here and it cools me down. Um, and so I would stay super, super late. I would work so many hours. And you know what's even worse? At this job, I would regularly do all kinds of stuff that wasn't in my job description. It's very interesting how that works. Now, I was a salesperson. But as it turns out, you can make... A company can make a lot more money if they have more cars available than what they originally have listed for the company that I worked for. So what they would sometimes do is during downtime, they would have the salespeople go out and help clean and prepare cars. Yeah, Retcon, we, Ret, me and Retcon used to work this job together. And let me tell you two quick stories, okay? because I was one of the lucky ones. My company um, would have us wash cars all the time, but we were still treated as salespeople. So even though we had to go out and roll up our sleeves and go clean up the cars during the downtimes, uh, even, even if we were in suits, even if we were all dressed up and whatever, we would have to go clean those cars. At least I wasn't one of the other companies because there's a company out there that some of you may have heard of called Hertz. Hertz actually no longer exists. They used to exist. Hertz went out of business. But before they went out of business, they changed all of their salespeople into flex reps. What's a flex rep? Well, a flex rep is somebody who does customer service and car cleaning. And they changed from a commission-based structure to a pseudo-commission structure where you would get a bonus based on your sales. But you had to make your sales numbers or they would fire you. And you had to clean cars or they would fire you. And the reason why this was able to happen is because it was normalized. Bosses would regularly ask their workers to go clean cars. And of course, the workers, realizing that they're at a place of disadvantage, would go clean cars because they want to be good to their boss and they want to be a nice hard worker and they want to make sure that they're doing the thing. And eventually it became so normalized that that just became part of the position. The corporation started to rely on every salesperson, no matter how talented the salesperson was, doing the manual labor, even though that's not what their job description fit. And it sucked because the people who worked at Hertz got paid way less. But you can't just easily get a job once you're stuck in a job. You can't just easily switch to another company if that company doesn't have job openings available. So you're just stuck. Oh yeah, they had an automatic car wash, but it was always broken because guess what? They had reps to do it for them. They don't need to fix the car wash when they have people who would go wash it for them. Hertz is still around, but it got bought out and it's a long story. I'm not going to get into that right now. Most of the Hertz branches have closed. And I'm going to talk about other such examples of this because I want you to be able to recognize if, you're, if you have become a work cuck. Have you ever 
helped with something right after you punched out. You know, like you punch out or you go and you take your 15 minute break and on your way to your 15 minute break, uh, your boss is like, hey, can you help me with this real quick? And then you go, yeah, 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 hold on. I'll come over and help you. And then you end up not getting a break because you decided to help your manager unpaid. Tons of people I know do this, especially young people. People have worked on their lunch. Yeah. Oh, that's theft, but it doesn't matter. There's nothing you can do about it. It is theft. I agree, but it doesn't matter. And here in America, there's a lot of pressure. You will be told constantly, oh, the best workers, you go above and beyond. You always want to go above and beyond, above and beyond, above and beyond. They love that word. They love that phrase, above and beyond. Oh, God, do they love it. Is there any legal avenue to push back on wage theft? Yep, but good luck with it. Good luck with it. They will shit can you so quick if they catch wind of it. They will fight you the entire way and it will all be on your shoulders. Because in America, we have this thing called uh, right to work. We have this thing called, uh, called at will employment in many states. And these are laws that make it very, very difficult. And they put the onus on the worker to solve issues of the workplace. It's terrible. It's really terrible. And here's the deal. Like I said, most Americans are work cucks. Most Americans, oh, oh, you wanna know what else? You know what else happened? How many of you, real quick, I just wanna do a quick site chat poll. Let's try this. How many have worked a dynamic schedule job? Another poll. Let's click this poll here. Have you worked a dynamic schedule job where every week they would issue you a new schedule or every two weeks they would issue you a new schedule which you had next to no, uh, no say in? This is very common in retail. This is very common in grocery stores. This is very common in, in uh, like Walmarts and stuff like that. Oh, look at that. Look at how many people here have done that. So the mostly American audience that I have here Almost 60% of them have at one point worked a dynamic schedule job. And a dynamic schedule basically means that every single week you get jerked around to a completely different schedule. And some places, some workplaces reach some level of stasis where you get generally the same shifts. But it always changes a little bit. And every week, you gotta, you're got you responsible. They're not responsible for telling you your schedule. You're responsible for checking it. Which sometimes means going into the workplace yourself, in person. And sometimes while you're there, they will ask you to do more work when you go in to check your schedule. These are experiences I have had. I have gone in when I was when I was like 16 and working at Best Buy on a dynamic schedule and got told, "Oh hey, uh, can you help us out? We need a little extra help on this uh, on this shift." And oh yeah yeah, Silent and Retcon both bring up the fact that they change your schedule last minute all the time. It's exceedingly common, and a lot of times they get away with it. They'll change your schedule. They'll put you on. They'll call you in the morning and be like, hey, you're on the schedule for today. And you go, oh, shit, I didn't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're on the schedule. And usually the manager will be a dick bag and play it off. They'll be like, oh, yeah, you're on the schedule. You got to check your schedule, even if they changed it just two days before. And there is no restriction on them doing this shit. Hey, thank you so much, Prime. Happy to see you, though. Happy to see you here. Thanks for coming by. Um... All of this is work cuck shit. And that brings us to the meat of this issue, which is what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to show you a little tweet that I made earlier that ruffled some feathers online. In fact, I'm still getting notifications about it right now. But you know what? I think it's important that we go over it because I have some serious things to talk about with it. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? So quick review for the workers of America. Pandemic yeeted most of the jobs. Jobs aren't back. The gig economy is exploding. And by the way, YouTubers are gig economy workers. Just so you know. Just so that you know. Government aid got sucked up by big companies. We talked about this extensively last year and early this year. CDC is currently warning about vaccine-resistant COVID Delta variant, which is on the rise. This is currently not protected by our existing vaccines. There's no additional stimulus even in 
even even being discussed. And then I ended it by saying, stop working hard. And a lot of people got mad. Seriously, a lot of people got really mad at me saying, stop working hard. Oh, I know. Demon Mama ruffling feathers. Oh, I've been ruffling a lot of feathers lately. Hey, Morg Pork, thank you for the gifted tier one sub. I appreciate that. Who got mad? Uh, a couple of other streamers. Um, in fact, one person said that I was damaging a generation of people of my followers, but with irresponsible messaging, which, uh, lol. Absolutely lol. Absolutely cucked shit. Oh, thanks, Luffy Momo. You know what's funny, Wooly? That you say that hustle culture is toxic. Wooly says hustle culture is toxic. But guess what? Hustle culture is actually better than being work cucked. You want to know why hustle culture is better than being work cucked? Even though I, I hate hustle culture. Oh, I fucking hate. I absolutely hate hustle culture. But it's better than being work cucked. And the reason why is because hustle culture has an element of entrepreneurship. It has an element of teaching you to to have a stake in the things that you're working towards. Yeah, they're like always on my grind. Oh yeah, I'm grinding. It's the weekend, the sun is out, and I'm grinding. Oh shit, you know what I'm doing? Here's what I do. I, I eat, I grind, I grind, and I grind. E-G-G-G. They do all that stupid shit. They do all that stupid shit. And, and, but guess what? They're still not as cucked as a work cuck. Because this is what a work cuck does. A work cuck walks into their job and goes, Oh boy, I'm so lucky to have a job. And they look outside and they see a bunch of homeless people and they go, Oh God, what if that was me? I'm so lucky to have a job. Oh, I'm so lucky. Oh, okay, let me rush into my workplace and do whatever unbelievable humiliating tasks are given to me for an embarrassingly low wage. And then they go, Oh, and when stuff happens at work that's... A that's way above and beyond or it's more stressful than they should be able than they should have to deal with alone they grit their teeth and they go no persistence is strong i would be weak willed if i let this get to me i would be weak willed if i complained i would be weak willed if i asked for help or if i told my manager no and that is reinforced by the management constantly hinting that oh we'll pick somebody else if you don't work hard if you're not doing it all And people buy it. People buy into it. People really buy into it. How many of you, I mean, come on, I know you all have met work cucks, and I know you all have been work cucks. I know all of you have gone into a job and been like, nah, I'm on my job. I feel like shit, but I don't care. I know, I know that almost every single person in this audience has gone into work sick because either they didn't have the work, the sick days anymore because American jobs have limited sick days, which is absurd. Or they had sick days and just didn't want to use them because they weren't sick enough. Despite the fact that them being sick and going in is likely to spread the illness if it's, contract if it's contagious. Woke up one morning vomiting blood and my manager went off on me for calling in. Well, fuck them. Yeah, no, not, yeah, not sick enough was like a constant thing in my office job. Same thing. Every job I've ever had, people show up fucking coughing and hacking and vomiting at their job. They'll, do you know how many people I've known who've thrown up on the job because they came into work feeling sick because they were scared of, of, of being, uh, passed over for a raise or of their, their, uh, you know, quarterly reviews being bad or missing out on sales or whatever just horrible and he, i am here to tell you wait wait is solution to this just unionization or is there other ways to pursue pursue workers rights oh there's all kinds of ways and i'm going to tell you an awesome way are you ready are you ready i'm about to tell you the most awesome way to fight against this get ready stop working hard stop it stop working hard stop it Stop it. Just just stop. Just just stop five head. It is that it is actually that simple. If you are paid minimum wage, you are being paid less 
than minimum effort. Slacktivism at work? Yes, absolutely. Oh, 100%. And here's the thing. There's a sneaky other thing that you can do. Are you ready? Guess what? Guess what? Here's a secret. You don't have to act like you're working less hard. You, you can just do it. You can just work less hard and act as though you're working really hard. You don't owe your boss fucking anything, especially right now. What if that gets you fired? It probably won't. Here's the thing. Now, if you're really lazy at your job, like obviously blatantly lazy to the point that you're derelicting all of your duties, you might get fired. But chances are, if you just don't go above and beyond, they won't even know. They don't know what above and beyond even means. Your boss has no fucking clue what that means. And they don't care because guess what? Your boss is slacking too. At the job that I used to work at, where there was always this pressure to do more, do more, do more, my boss would be texting literally on two separate phones. My boss would take long lunches. My boss would just decide not to come in because she was salaried and could get away with that. She was a massive slacker, but she always pushed the other workers to work harder and harder and harder. And that job, do you want to know what it was that taught me this mentality? I'm serious when, when I say this. There was a time where I took two shifts, a back-to-back -back shift on Christmas because I thought that I was going to get double time and a half for those shifts. I didn't have Christmas Day plans because my family did stuff the next day because of a whole bunch of reasons. And I, and I had two co-workers who wanted to have the day off. So I took both of their shifts under the, under the expectation I was going to be getting paid double time and a half for those shifts. Guess what? I got paid normal time with a $50 bonus because of a because my boss found a technicality in the rules. And after that, I realized and I I got mad at my boss and I said, "What the hell? That's not fair." And then she said, "It's out of my hands. It's payroll. That's payroll's job." That was on it's on payroll. It's payroll's rule. There's nothing I can do about it. $50 for sitting in an airport doing sales and cleaning cars for 16 hours on Christmas Day. And that's not illegal, by the way. And I, that literally, that literally broke my, my, my mind. I was like, I just got fucked so hard. And I realized that no matter how nice or decent my boss seems, you got to look out for number one. Because remember, in the corporate world, that's the same. That's the, that is what's going on. They are looking out for number one, which is the company. Yeah, it was my Joker moment. That was. I'm. I'm not kidding you when I say that it was a radical, a radicalizing moment in, um, in. Uh, in my experience with jobs with regard to labor and how I understood work it, it changed the way that I looked at work and the and the funny thing is that I was one of the, like I'm not kidding you when I say somewhere in this room I don't know exactly where I have a box of trophies that I got for being a, a, a beyond stellar salesperson I was very very good at sales I have trophies I got for it. And still, I got fucked. Do you want to know what my yearly raise was? Even though my numbers were going up, even though the business's numbers were going up, do you want to know what my yearly hourly pay raise was every year? 25 to 35 cents. 25 to 35 cents. Year over year. Even though their line went up, even though my efforts went up, even though I was working harder than ever. No, I had not chosen my name at that time. It's insulting. Yay, thank you so much, Lonnie. 
had to drop by and say I love I love the new hair though. It's a great color. Thank you. It's changed a little bit, interestingly. It used to be more orange at the tips and yellow, but that's okay. I like it anyway. Gayfesh says, at the job where I eventually made supervisor, they literally did not give me my raise for three months. Eventually, I got on the fucking CEO and asked him why I'd been doing this job for three months with no extra pay. And he had the audacity to say, oh, because you're oh, oh because you're still probationary and want to make sure you'll work out. When literally everyone agreed I was the best worker there. He told me I get the raise, but no back pay. I got the raise finally three months after that call. That's absurd. And also, you want to know what else is really common? Uh, American jobs that make you work there a year before you get any vacation benefits. I do remember that retcon. Oh, I do remember that retcon. A year of laboring to even qualify for vacation days. There are, there's been so many times in my life where I've wanted to do things with friends and they were told, I can't, they told me, oh, I can't do anything because I don't have any vacation days until I've worked here for a year. And guess what? In this economy, you job jump all the time. You're encouraged to job jump. You might never qualify for vacation time that you're entitled to. And the takeaway of all of this is to uncuck yourself. Realize that you have no moral obligation to be a hard worker for someone who is not paying you for hard work. Now, if you're at your job and they're paying you real good and they're giving you percentages or you've got a stake or you work at a co-op or anything like that, go for it. Work hard because you're getting something that you deserve from that. But if they're not, and most of, and in 99.9% .9 of cases, they are not going to be paying you well. Or they're not going to be paying you fairly, I should say. Because there are jobs where you don't necessarily get paid well, but the benefits are very, very good. For example, being a part of a co-op that has the potential to grow. These sorts of things. VP Trashman with the $5. My Joker moment was when my father, a garbage man, did a whole bunch of extra trainings for specialty waste and then got fired because for doing all of that extra work, he was the highest paid worker. Yes, that shit happens all the time. There were jobs that I, that I went to that would not let you do other trainings because they didn't want you to qualify for paid raises. So they would simply forbid you from doing the trainings. Even though the corporation had developed those trainings specifically with the goal in mind of raising your pay. Not to mention that in any capitalistic st structure, you will mathematically not be paid the full value of your labor. So here's the funny thing. I do think that there, that, let me, let me be clear about all this. I think that hard work is such a broad term that nobody actually knows what it means. And so I am going to do my best to try and use things like good work instead, instead of terms like hard work, because hard work it leads to this insane American mentality where, whereby Americans believe that they need to be... Have you ever experienced this? I'm sure some of you have experienced this, right? Like, um, like, uh, like, like, have you ever experienced, um, like going into your job and, and, and everybody is like one-upping each other to talk about how agonized they are. They're like, oh, I worked 70 hours last week. And somebody's like, yeah, I only worked 60 here, but I got another job. So I'm exhausted. Have you ever been, have you ever been in a workplace where that happens? Where people like, like, uh, try to dick measure over who was, who was the most miserable? It's like every single job I've ever worked is like that. Everybody's constantly dick measuring about how miserable they are at work. Because in America, the, there, it is not a metric of what you make. We literally have, there's this fucking stupid, this stupid fucking moronic idea in America that you're not supposed to talk about how much you make. So instead of talking about how much you make, everybody just complains about how much work they did and how miserable they are so that they can, uh, so, as a stand in for how much they're paid. It's like a status thing, but it's a stupid status thing. Break yourself of that. Stop it. Holy shit. Stop it. 
Silent says, I single-handedly used up the Walmart I worked at's overtime budget several times. They'd send me home on Fridays frequently because they were on over on overtime hours. So even though I stayed four hours over on Tuesday, I didn't make any time and a half because they brought me back down to 40 by sending me early, says Silent. Yes, that's another tactic they do. They'll call you, they'll have you stay in for overtime and then bump your hours when they don't need you anymore. So you work hard during the hardest hours and you get nothing for it. Nothing. You get nothing. Stop letting them cuck you. You understand? Listen to me. Stop letting them cuck you. You do not owe these companies anything. You do not owe them a hard day's work. You do not owe them misery. In fact, I would argue that it would be a much more ethical and moral and self-fulfilling task to, I don't know, find a way to have the best day that you can possibly have at work every single day without getting yourself fired. That's the new challenge to all of those work cucks out there. Stop trying to figure out how you can be the hardest worker in the workplace. And instead, find out how you can do the, the least work possible without getting fired. Bam, new challenge. Chances are you'll succeed at that because managers are fucking stupid and bosses are motherfucking stupid 99% of the time. Max Sip says, hey, Demon Mama, finally back. Quit my job because of how much pain I'm in due to my job. Agreed on everything you're saying. That's why I poop on company time. Yep. Boss makes a dollar. I make a dime. That's why I poop on the company time. Old, old jokey, uh, jokey rhyme that still appeal applies to this day. Because let's be real. Unfortunately, it's an unfortunate fact of this goddamn society that we got to go work for stupid corporations in order to be able to pay our stupid bills. And we're going to talk about the housing things. We're going to talk about all these things. Oh, no, no, no. Never, never disparaging girl bosses. Never, ever, 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 ever. Yes, that's correct. If you have Amazon Prime, you get Twitch Prime, as far as I understand, peanut butter pierogies. You want to know what was really fucked? I worked a job where they timed your bathroom breaks. I'm not kidding you. They literally, you would have to go and you would have to put in a code on your phone that would say that you were taking a bathroom break and would keep track of it. Completely invasive. No, actually. It was for a hospital. Nobody wants to be a loser. Nobody wants to be a cuck. And cucks and losers are the only types of people who try to be a goody two-shoes hard worker. And I, I can say this having been that person for, for like a decade, okay? I'm 30 now. You, I'm saving you a lifetime of, of bullshit. And here's the other side of it, okay? There is such a thing as good work. There really really, really is such a thing as good work. There are things that are absolutely worth putting your love and effort into. There are all kinds of things that are like that. Some of them might also happen to be your job. Again, you work at a co-op, you're a musician, you're a, you got some sort of audience of your own, whatever. Those things are perfectly good to dump, dump energy into. Go ahead and get your little workaholic heart out on it. I do. Even though I'm a, a, a contract uh, employee through YouTube, at the end of the day, I have my own site. So, of course, I'm going to get my little workaholic heart and, and, and do a little bit of wage cucking for all you. But that's because I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it directly for my customers, the people who are paying me. I have a stake in it, and so does everyone on my team. Every single person on my team has got a stake in this. And the reason why I give them a stake is because I want them to have a motivation to work, a reason to work. But let's be real. Most jobs are not like that. Yeah, I got to do a mod night. I got to do a mod night before the month is over. Thank you for reminding me. I've been so overwhelmed this month. Through comparing wages, I learned that my coworker who was in my job for six years only had a $1 raise in that amount of time. 
I work for 12 an hour. Holy shit. That is absurd. We do mod we do mod nights once a month and they're really fun and cool. Um but we'll 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 talk about that another time. So, this is not to say that that like putting your all into something is bad. It isn't. Putting your all into something you're passionate about, putting your all into learning an instrument, putting your all into some engineering project that you like, putting your all into a piece of code that you really, really believe in is awesome. But putting your all into your corporate job that is paying you minimum wage and really hopes that you're stupid enough to work as hard as you can for them while they pay you a pittance, that is cucked. And again, I say that with with as, as much lack of judgment as possible because I know our society tells us that, our parents tell us that, our media tells us to do that. Our media makes makes hero characters out of like the good worker who shows up and and does above and beyond on the job. And yes, you should never be afraid to compare wages. Never. Just don't do it on the job. Talk to your talk to your employ em, your coworkers off the job. You 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 can't legally be fired for that. So that's tough to deal with, MS sloth, uh, sloth. We got Karl Marx quote here. Karl Marx said, "Capital is a dead vampire, and not having beans of production of my own makes me an alien." True! True! Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate that. Let's let's take a look at what Ricky's got to say for us. Karl Marx said, Capital is a dead vampire, and not having beans of production of my own makes me an alien. So if that's what capitalism is, that's fucked. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ricky. VM Draco from Twitch chat says, currently at my job now and I work 30 hours for 1260 as a janitor. I'm usually alone at the whole floor to myself and can, cl and can clean well and take longer than 15 minute breaks because my back hurts from binding and need food. Everyone who does check says I'm doing a great job and they appreciate that I keep the place tidy. Job successfully hacked? Yep. You keep that up. That's the sweet spot. See? Like, what did I say? Most managers are fucking stupid. Just do what you, the... You should be doing the minimum that you have to do to keep the job every single time. Oh, no. We'll, I'll watch that clip in a little bit, Mar Mike Marshall. It's so true. When I uh, This is Cool Olds from Twitch Chat says, It's so true. When I was at my best and got Employee of the Month, a jealous co co-worker called corporate and said I was inebriated at work i refuse to drug test so uh, so to keep my health insurance walgreens gives you the option to basically go through a corporate drug court like i had to go to na or aa meetings three times a week and get it signed off well make them send you to aa meetings and then just don't show people always try to go and engage with corporations on good faith but corporations do not engage with you on good faith they really really don't and do you want to know what's funny have you have you all heard the the sort of oft-repeated adage that worker productivity has only gone up over the last half a century? Worker productivity goes up and up and up. Workers are better than they've ever been before, and they're better equipped than ever before. But at the same time, wages have stagnated. So you are working harder and getting less for it. And I mean every worker is in that position. True silent. In conclusion, work is the poop. It's true. I love that line. You gotta throw the, you gotta throw the boot at him. And that's how they cuck you. So don't be a cuck. Does that make sense, everyone? Is that does this rant make sense? This was the anti-work rant I've been itching to do all day, because oh my god, I see people go to bat for this pseudo grind culture bullshit over and over and over again online constantly and i see people wringing their hands and it comes from a good place it comes from a good place in the end but uh but people are like oh like what if i'm being bad what if i'm being like oh am i am i 
am I being dishonest? You are, you are literally being exploited by your workplace. If you work for a major corporation, you are unironically being exploited by your workplace. And you're worrying about whether you're behaving nicely when you choose to just like sit out one random fucking task that isn't even your job. Do you know how much bullshit I've been put through at various jobs? When I worked at Kmart, I got, I got forced to go make pizzas, which I had no training for and completely fucked up. It was an incredibly stressful a situation where the customers got really mad at me all because my manager wanted to go buy smokes across the street. It was horrible. Work as hard as you are actually being paid. And please, you will, I promise you, you will save your life. You will save your own life. Because if you engage with corporations on, on, uh, on, on, if you engage with corporations on good faith, they will squeeze you to death. They will take advantage of your good faith. That is literally their job. That is literally their job. You understand that, right? Even the nicest boss, that is their job. Their job is to maximize profit. Maximizing profit means paying you the least they can for the most work. I want you to really, if you take away anything from this, please understand that every single for-profit company in the entirety of the world, that is their goal. And it will always be their goal until that structure is changed or until that structure no longer exists. Even if your boss is super nice. I made myself a promise after that whole Christmas event. And I didn't always keep it. <laughs> That's fine, Silent. It's, it's, it's work for, a, for, a re, for an actually valuable cause. And I think you've probably gotten a higher pay raise over the last year, percentage-wise, than any, any other worker in America. I swear to God. But if there's one thing you take away from this entire segment, it's that. That every single company and every single boss, their goal is to pay you the least for the most work. So don't buy into it. Don't do their job for them. Make them work to get your work. Okay? And then here's the other thing. The promise I made myself after that whole Christmas incident where I got totally, totally screwed and swindled out of my Christmas pay that I rightfully deserved. I made a promise to myself, which was I would never do a favor for a coworker again unless it was a personal favor for a friend. So if I had a coworker who was literally my personal friend and they needed me for one reason or another to help them in their personal life, even if it had to do with work, then I would do it. Then I would do the favor, but I would never do favors again. And guess what? Nothing changed except my life got better. I didn't lose my job. I didn't get paid less. In fact, I started making more money because I stopped wasting my time doing stupid shit and I was less tight, less tired when I stop doing favors for my boss. Humans, uh, Posadas John says, I think one reason why this happens is because humans are naturally cooperative and corporations will exploit this like they exploit everything else. Yes. They exploit your good nature. Most humans are good natured. Most humans don't like feeling like they're dishonest. Most, most uh, humans don't like the idea of looking at their boss and going, uh-huh, I'll do all of that to the best of my ability and then not doing that because it feels like a lie. But they, corporations know this. Listen, I'm telling you, I, I'm t I, I promise you, I have been 
in the closed doors meetings. I have been invited into the inner circles of, of a Fortune 500 company. They talk about this. They talk about worker psychology and how you can convince your workers to do more work for less pay. This is something that is talked about all the time. They don't want you to know that, but it is. And when I say they, I mean corporate leaders. This is a huge part of scientific management. They talk about the psychology, manipulating the psychology of workers. They don't say it like that. They say, oh, managing morale. But it's manipulating your psychology to get you to do more for less pay because that massively increases their profit margins. Think about this. If they can trick their workers to going above and beyond, that is m m magical. It creates profit out of nowhere. You're doing the product and they're making all the money. All of it. You're just, they're teaching you go above and beyond. And all of that above and beyond, none of it goes to you. All of it goes to them. And the pittance that they give you for the rest still mostly goes to them. I could have got as trans girl, but I had morals. I'm not kidding you. I, I have the skills to be the most ruthless salesperson. Look, I, I'm telling you right now, I, am, I was very good at sales. I literally left because it was so draining on my soul. I hate to be like, I hate to be like, like, oh, I had a moral crisis, but I basically did. Between the sexism that I experienced and between that and the just raw dishonesty of the industry, have I ever told you, uh, have I ever told you, um, did I ever tell you the, the, the scheme? Listen, I discovered a, I just, I was let in on a scheme that was being run by a massive, massive rental chain. Okay. I, I was let in on a scheme that was being run that fucked over the workers and made our lives hell. And it made literally millions of dollars for the corporation. It made, it made the experience for renters worse, and it made the experience for employees significantly worse. But they did it anyway. And you want to know why they did it? It's the most stupid and horrible and, 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 and wasteful scheme you could possibly imagine. But they did it because they made millions of dollars out of thin air. Just literally printing money. So the managers made that decision. And I mean the manager of like the, uh, the state level made this decision and it was made our lives horrible and i was let in on this because they were trying to get me to join management they wanted me to join management and i said no and i left my job you want to know the scheme sure you know what i'll tell you the scheme here's how it works okay ready are you all ready to hear the scheme i'm going to explain the scheme for you i'm going to anonymize it but i'm going to tell you the scheme okay ready here we go. Here was the scheme. So, American car companies love to sell trucks, right? Americans fucking, they're obsessed with trucks. We love big fucking trucks. As it turns out, most trucks actually don't cost very much to make. Um, the average big truck, like a Ford F-150 or a Dodge Ram or any of those cars... Yeah, the F-150. Those trucks actually don't have a lot of features. And as far as producing them, um, they're pretty cheap to produce. But they can sell them at a premium because Americans see them as a sort of status symbol for because of advertising, because of movies, because of a whole bunch of different stuff, okay? So they cost a little more, but they don't cost much to make. Now... If you were a car manufacturing company, one of the best things that you could do is get people driving your car, right? You want people to, who, don't own, who don't currently own a truck to get the opportunity to drive a truck so that they'll like the truck and they'll feel big and strong in the truck and then they'll come buy a truck, which makes you a lot of money. So the truck companies realized, hey, we could sell these trucks to car rental companies for way cheaper than we would sell to anybody else. 
and we could get people in our trucks because the rental car companies will rent the trucks and then people will rent will drive the trucks around while they're renting and they'll come home and they'll go gee i should buy a ford f-150 but it doesn't end there because the rental car company realized that they could buy the discount trucks brand new at the discount they could rent them and then they could resell them used in almost perfect condition and they would make money without ever even having to rent the truck they would just make money so what do they do well they load up on trucks right they load up the fleets on trucks the rental fleets get full of Amer of trucks but guess what people don't rent trucks people don't rent trucks ever they rent economy cars and they hope for a free upgrade but they don't want a free upgrade into a fucking gas guzzling truck they want their they want uh, a free upgrade into like uh you know a sedan but guess what they're gonna get a free upgrade into a truck but the corporation doesn't care the corporation doesn't give a shit because they're making money off the truck and every time a truck goes out on a rental they're making money on that truck that they're then is above and beyond the money they're gonna make when they sell the truck they don't even if the truck never goes on the road they would make money but if the truck goes on the road they make even more so they load the fleet with trucks now this is very bad for salespeople because you can't make any money as a salesperson if you if every single person who comes in is getting a free upgrade into a truck and not only can you not make any money but the the customers get mad the customers are like i have a, a kid i don't want to put my kid's car seat in a truck i'm just driving to my grandma's house i don't want to pay the fuel size for a truck i've never driven a truck it's too big yeah you've been up, up, offered truck upgrades yep this is spreading elsewhere so who pays the price here not the corporation not ford or dodge it's the workers and the customers the employees who have to deal with like hundreds of complaints every day about being stuck in a truck and can't make sales money anymore but guess what the corporation doesn't care because they can take the hit on the sales because they're making money off the truck and that was the scheme that's the scheme and it fucks over the workers it made our lives hell i hated it so goddamn much holy shit i hated it so much and they made and i'm not kidding you i saw the numbers because again the management let me in on it and it was deliberate this was deliberate they did this deliberately they explained how it worked to me and i went and looked at it and they were making millions of dollars off of this scheme and the only people who had to pay the price was every single employee in the entire state. Every single customer who got forcibly upgraded into, because the contract says they can do that. It's not illegal. They're not doing anything illegal. If you look in the small text, you can get upgraded for free into any car. Yep. Yes, they can, Iron Cubal. And if you make a big enough stink, you might get what you want. But most people won't make a stink. Most people won't complain. Again, because they're taking advantage of your good nature yes they know they calculate and know that most people won't complain that much eddie says and me as the car salesman made bank on the fleet truck sales because i was a fleet salesman and sold the company yep decoy duck says i upgraded to a massive suv last time i rented a car i was way too tired uh, to push back that you wouldn't have gotten what you wanted because they didn't have it. I could tell you so many secrets about the rental industry, but we're not going to do that now. That's the scheme. And it sucks.